Hello everyone, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel. Kim at How's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty good. So um, we are back today to do some accessories now for the secretary um, that I did in the last video. And I do still need to get the, the little top thing for it, which I may be doing somewhere during this video. <laughs> I'm gonna take a run out to the craft store because I gotta grab a couple things anyway, but um, so we're going to be making some of the different stuff to decorate this using one of my kits. So this is the um, Scrolls, Charts, and Ephemera Kit Set 1 that I have available on Etsy. Um, so we're going to be using this and we are going to make some accessories. So I, I actually have this out this time. Haha. -ha. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make the little scrolls here and how to do like the little bundles of letters. Uh, I'm going to move this freaking candle all over the place. Um, we're going to do some of the little newspapers and we'll do the fancy scrolls as well. And these are really super, super easy. So I have a bunch of stuff out um, that you're going to need to make the different things. So first off, we're going to have the kit. Let's scoot this back a little bit. So this is the kit and I just printed it onto, it's kind of like a thick copy paper. Um, you can do it onto parchment, you can do it on whatever you like. Um, but here's the thing with the copy paper, right? So on the back, it's going to be just plain white. So here's what I did. I printed some tea dyed paper on the back and I thought, you know, I really should have put that in with the kit. So here's what I've done. On my Etsy, I have updated the kit. So the kit now also comes with um, uh, three JPEGs and a PDF that have three different. I just printed the same one, I think, on here. Or no, I didn't. I, are they separate? I don't even know. But um, it's got three different um, of my scanned in coffee dyed papers. And so I put that in there with that just in case you should want to print them on the back so you don't have to worry about what the back looks like. Um, Etsy in its infinite wisdom. Now, if I go and do something like that where I've updated it and I've added this extra file to it, if you've already purchased it, it doesn't let you get the piece that I added, which is stupid. So if you have already purchased this kit, I want you to have the, the papers as well. So what you can do is you can go into where your purchases are, I believe, click on the, the kit when you got it and do the contact seller thing. And then just send me a message with your email and I will email the, um, the PDF, the little zip file that has the, the PDF and the, the three JPEGs of the coffee dye papers should you want them. Um, that way you can have them too because I, I I really wish they would let you do that. What happens if you did something wrong in a file and a bunch of people have already bought it? You can't fix it? That's stupid. Anyway, so that's Etsy though. So I've done some like that so that we've got this sort of backing so it's not just the plain white paper. And I was actually coffee dyeing a bunch of stuff last night. So I went ahead and I coffee dyed a set of them as well. So this is actually coffee dyed. And then of course I had printed the coffee dyed paper on the back. So it's like overkill, but whatever. Um, so I've coffee dyed them as well. I do mine on a laser printer, so I can do this. The colors aren't going to run or smudge. If you use an inkjet printer, they could, if you're going to coffee or tea stain it. Um, I do like it better though, than just taking and like spraying it. Um, that's the problem with having ephemera everywhere is you can never find it. So I do have some that I did where I just kind of sprayed it and see, I don't really, you know, of course it being raw paper, it's just going to pull the, the ink dye stuff right in. So it's a little too splotchy, right? Like there's some kind of industrial coffee accident going on. Um, so that's why I just went ahead and straight tea dyed them this time. And I do like the way they came out a lot better. So um, we have our paper to make our stuff from. And so what are we going to need? Well, for the different scrolls and stuff I have here, this is a skewer and I've just cut the end off because I've used the end on something obviously. And it's about uh, I'd say about an eighth of an inch um, in diameter. And then I also have a dowel that is three sixteenths of an inch. So that way the scrolls can be slightly different sizes because they would be, right? Um, and then for the fancy ones, we are going to use toothpicks, just regular old everyday toothpicks, which I have here. Um, and then for the ends of them, I'll show you. See how it's got the Fancy little ends with the shiny business. So what those are, are spacer beads. You can use spacer beads, you can use bead caps, you can use all kinds of stuff. So I have a, a big selection of them here in silver and in copper. So we'll be picking from those. Bead caps are real fun too. 
I don't know how well you can see that because it can, you know, it tapers. There we go. It tapers a bit, so it, it looks even more finished. So that's the one you kind of want to make sure you get the diameter nice and large so it'll look right on there um, if you want to use those. But anyway, got those. And then what I use to decorate the very tip ends of them are these. These are just a rhinestone mix um, that I use for card making, so I have a ton of them. And you can get them at the craft store as well. Um, but I like these because for the price of one of these, I would get a little tiny thing of only one size at the craft store. And this is all different sizes here, and they're just gorgeous. So these ones I get from Honeybee Stamps, obviously. They make great stuff. Um, Pretty Pink Posh makes really good sequins, too. And then some ribbons. So this is a 1 8 inch ribbon here that you can find in the craft store. Um, I've got a couple colors. And then I've got this is a little bit narrower. So I want to say this is more like a 1 16th. It's about half the diameter of that. But that's perfect for scale. This I get from Alpha Stamps. Um, and you buy it by the yard. It's like a dollar something a yard. It's nothing. So we got that. And then also um, embroidery floss. So like if you're doing cross stitch or any of that kind of stuff, it's this, the DMC floss. And I have a ton of colors because I also do cross stitch and things. So you can use all sorts of different colors on it. So got those. And then of course I've got my distress ink to distress the edges of things to make them look nice and old. And I got the new blending dome foam thing. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully that'll work good. Um, I've got my bone folder for stuff and of course glue. So I'm going to use the Scotch Create Tacky Glue except for when I put the little bead cap ends on. I will probably use like the Gorilla Super Glue or something like that or E6000 just so it, it has a little firmer of a hold on there. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to use with all this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away. I'm going to cut all these out. Um, and then I will come back to you and we'll start putting some stuff together depending on time because as we know I'm, I'm so good with you know time management um, I also want to make some books for it and I had some ideas about a different way to make the books so like here I do have kits for the books as well but we'll make some books to go in there if I have time if it doesn't take too long for this so we'll see I'm trying to keep my videos at like 45 minutes ish so wish me luck on that but I will be right back. So I have cut out both the um, coffee stained and the non-coffee stained one. And if you can see right here, look at the difference in, in, in thickness of it, the little piles. This is, it's all scrunchy, so it's, it's sticking way up higher. But um, I've got them in here. This is one of those little art bin containers, which is great for having ephemera where you can actually see it and kind of poke about through it. Um, I am leaving out these, so there's five of these um, in the kit, and these are all labels. They're actually pages from a catalog, vintage catalog from like the 1800s or whatever, um, where pharmacists would purchase the labels for their bottles of stuff that they were doing. So um, we'll be using these on the bottles, and I did go to Hobby Lobby um, in the interim after I cut everything out, and because I wanted to get the pediment thing for the top. Did they have it? No. Why? Because they hate me, I think, is, is the answer to that. So I'm going to try this. So this is like a whopping 250. And if it doesn't work, I mean, I can totally use this on something else. So it's all good. This is wood. <clears throat> if it does work, we can use one on the other one, too. So there's two of them in here. And they're, I think they're designed to go like on furniture because it's called an applique. So go figure. You would applique it to something. But, you know, it doesn't look half bad up here as a decoration. So kind of fiddle with that towards the end, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. So anyways, I have this out here so we can look at the length of the different items to do the scrolls and stuff with, just to make sure everything's going to fit. So if I take these ones that I've done already and put them down here, yeah, they kind of stick out a bit, but you sort of want them to so that it, it looks interesting from other angles. So if, if we're looking at it from the side and they fall in, it means nothing. Um, if we're looking at it from the side, you know, we have these little bits sticking out, little stuff going on. Um, we can have some up here as well on the desktop. So we'll do the regular scrolls first. 
And then we'll do a fancy scroll or two to kind of go up here, or maybe they can be sort of stacked, you know, whatever we do with them. Um, and then after that, we'll do the little bundles of letters and the different little ephemera that kind of just sits on top, like the little folded letter, stuff like that. I had a great idea while I was cutting these out too. And I think I will be doing another kit of these, um, but postcards and letters, because I do have one, let me dig it out of here. This God only knows where in here it got to, but we need to do this anyway. So we'll pull out some of the larger ones. I use the scrolls, I do the larger ones. Um, this one. So this one here I have, it's a letter um, and it's both sides of the letter and then there's a small dividing line. I'm like, you know what I need to do is I need to make a kit like my postcards where it's got a bunch of letters and things and they're done specifically so that you can glue them back to back and you have a front and a back. So I may be doing that soon. So anyways, that's those guys there. And then she had um, in the picture uh, um, like an inkwell with a with a feather quill coming out of it. And so when I was there, they have like those big, huge bags of feathers and I'm not buying a huge bag of feathers for one little teeny tiny feather, right? And then I found this. Brilliant. So this was in the floral department and look at that, 59 cent this thing was. And it's like some sort of little spray that you put on know, an arrangement or something, but these feathers are nice and skinny and small and will be perfect. So we'll cut one of these off and we're gonna do a, a pin um, in the inkwell thing as well. So we'll do that after this business or I can maybe dust with it, that'd be fun. All right, so set these to the side, her little example, and we'll just sit them up here, why not? There we go. Okay, so let's look at some of the ones we have that are a bit larger that would be um, good as scrolls. So this is the one that I used here We'll set that to the side. I love that one. It's so pretty. All right, so the scrolls are usually going to be some kind of, you know, like chart, map. I usually do something with a picture element to it, just so it's more interesting, because these you wouldn't necessarily have as a scroll. Maybe you would. I don't know. I mean, who the hell uses scrolls now anyway, but still. So we've got those ones. That one's kind of cool. This one's cool. That one's cool. Where's my star one? Ha. Huh? I love this one. Isn't that pretty? So cool, I have several of these. Um, I just did one for the kit, same with these here. Illustrations, of course I did one for the kit, but there's a bunch more of them. It's a whole series of them done in the, I think it's the early 1800s, these particular ones. But see here we have the back, this has the, the tea stain paper on the back, so I don't have to worry about trying to color it and have it not look, you know, stark white. Um, see the little chart, oh we got this one with the suns on it. All right, all kinds of stuff. And this all right here, this is just two printouts of the kit cut up. And I mean, it just, it makes tons and tons of little things. So plenty of stuff to choose from. All right. Oh, we got that one too. The Kraken. Okay, let's put these back in here. So I definitely want to save this for one of the fancy scrolls because it's one of my favorite pictures. And I think I'll do, this is one of the fancy scrolls because we can have the scrolls open as wide as we want to show whichever you know, part of this picture that we want. So these will be fancy ones. Um, we'll do this as a regular one. And this one, that one's good. Mm, that one, and maybe that one, and this one, why not, okay. So, first thing I do is I'm going to decide which ones of these that I want in which size. Okay, so I'm going to use the 3 8 inch dowel and then I've got the skewer which is about a 1 8 inch. No, 2 8 inch. Dear God. Okay, this is, see, this is why I'm not a carpenter. <laughs> this is why I don't do actual furniture because it would be just messed up. Okay, so we will do this as a large one for sure. So we can show more of the picture. Maybe that one and that one. Okay, so these will be the larger ones. This will be the smaller ones. And then you get to decide which way do you want to roll it. Do you want to roll it so it's this long here? And I'll show you. See how far that's kind of sticking out? 
He's like, no, I can't because it's angles. Um, okay, so it'll stick out probably a good half inch or so. If we do it this way, though, it'll be more level. It'll only stick out maybe, you know, a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, something like that. Um, so maybe we'll do a couple short ones, a couple long ones. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just roll a bunch of stuff up. So what I generally do with it first is I want to kind of get it to start curling. So kind of like you do with the, um, when you're taking that curling ribbon like at Christmas or whatever and you kind of drag something across it. You can use a bone folder. You can use um, your scissors. Be very careful, obviously. Um, but I want to get it to start curling because it's going to make my life a lot easier if I do. Okay, so we've got that one there. We can go ahead and do a little bit of Distress Ink. I think on the edges, just so it looks all old and, and whatnot. Most of it we're not going to see because it's going to be rolled up. But Okay, so I think I want to have this part be the part on the outside. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take my skewer. I'm going to get my glue ready. So this is just regular PVA glue. Of course I use the Scotch Create Tacky Glue. You can use um, art glitter glue, whatever. Let me make sure it's actually coming out. Okay, it is. <laughs> Likes to rebel on me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to center myself in my little view here. Okay, and I'm going to start rolling it. Now, I want to take this leading edge and just push it down to get it to conform as round as possible and start rolling it. And I want it fairly tight, but not too tight on the skewer because if you get it too tight, you're going to have trouble getting it off of there. So we've got it there. Okay. Now that I have it wound around about one and a quarter times, um, now I'm going to put some glue on. If you don't do that, what you'll end up doing is gluing it to the skewer. Okay, and so just a little bit of glue here. And that's going to kind of hold it. And then you just roll it up. And you want to make sure that you're staying even on your edges. It's the other reason I like to cut the tapered part off of here, because it's tapered and, and you'll end up having a lopsided one. And when I get to this one, this is where I make sure I get the edges real good. Bring it up and around and just kind of press it over in sort of a, a rounding motion like this so that you don't end up with bits of it sticking up. And then once it grabs on there real good, you pull your skewer out. There you go. So Okay, we've got one scroll. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to let this dry. Um, and it's the same process, whether it's the large one or the smaller one. You can use whatever you want. You can use a paintbrush. You can use a pencil. You can use a pen. Whatever you like to get the scroll to whatever size you want. If you want a really teeny one, you know, you can use a toothpick. And that's going to give you a much smaller diameter of scroll. So it just depends on how you want them to look and what you want them to do. So. This part I am going to fast forward a bit and I'm going to do these scrolls and then I will come back to you once I've made them into scrolls and then we will decorate them um, with the ribbon and the embroidery floss. Okay, so here we've got it. We've got our thinner ones. We've got our thicker ones. You notice this one went a little wonky um, when I was rolling it. That's why it's important to just get it to be nice and tight and going straight to begin with. And I thought I did, but uh, apparently I didn't. But that's okay, because real scrolls will be like this anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, and since it's got the tea dyeing on there, you know, it, it's not stark white, you know, underneath the roll either, which is great. 
like these other ones I did where I just did a little bit of the staining stuff. See how white that is on the back? So I would end up having, see it's like blowing my uh, light balance out of proportion, but um, I would have to put some kind of distress ink or something on there to make it look a little more like the front. So that's why yeah, the tea stain paper printed on the back or just tea staining or coffee staining, it really, really helps. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie little ribbons or um, strings around the little scrolls. Because again, if it was a real scroll, you would have it tied up a bit. So I think I wanna try this little thin ribbon because I didn't have it when I did those originally. So we'll see how that works. Maybe do one or two of them in the blue. Go go with that burgundy. All right, and so just to save myself from heartache of pulling too tight and messing up the scrolls, I put them back on the skewer when I do this. So very carefully, and we can just put probably all three on each, each one, be long enough. That way we're gonna be sure it's gonna keep its round shape as opposed to if you pulled a little too tight and, and crunched it in at the middle. So same with these. All right, so we'll do one each of them in the black. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of this off. Okay, and I think I'm gonna do the larger one with this. So literally all I do is take it and I'm gonna tie the ribbon in a little knot. And see how, I just wanna see how it looks as a knot to see if maybe I wanna just, you know, put them over each other and then glue that down. I think it's, yeah, it's doing okay. The other ribbon's a bit thicker, so I'll probably have to do that with it. And yes, the tails are a bit long. I can always make them shorter. Um, but if I do it too short, I can't make them longer. So, all right, so we have the scroll now has its little ribbon around it. I'm pull that nice and tight. And then I'm gonna take some of the glue and I'm gonna put a little dot kind of in the area of the knot because I wanna keep it secured and sort of underneath so that way it'll stay in place on the scroll as well. And usually I do that kind of to the back also. Okay, so there's that one. And then for the blue, I think we probably would be best not tying it and just kind of having it cross over. So cut a little piece of that off. The nice thing is it's cheap enough, so if it looks like well, complete garbage, then I can fix it. That's the nice thing about being clumsy is that um, you tend to develop quick reflexes because <laughs> you're so used to knocking everything over. Okay, I think we'll put it on this one here. So instead of tying it, I think I'll just do it like so and then glue it right here. Um, and I'm going to check in some of my supplies that I have and see if I have something that would work as like a little faux wax seal. That'd be cute. Um, using actual wax at this scale would be very, very difficult. Actually, this ribbon looks a bit wide for that. You know what? I'm going to skip the, the quarter inch ribbon, I think, on that. And I will use the embroidery floss instead. So embroidery floss comes as six strands of thread all together. So I do use, um, I keep it at six strands for this, so it's nice and invisible on there. And same sort of thing, put it on here. And we're gonna tie the knot. Seriously, come on, there we go. Jeez. And again, I want to do this fairly tight on there. And that's why I have it on the skewer so I don't have to worry about crushing it. And then I'm going to center it where I want it on the scroll. 
I'll cut the ends off. And again, I'm going to cut these shorter, you know, once everything's dry and good and done and everything. So a little bit of glue on the knot itself because this stuff dries clear, so I don't have to worry about that. A little bit on the back. And we'll set that there. All right, and so I will tie the rest of these and then I will come right back. So we've got these all tied now, so we'll take them back off of the skewer and we'll just let them sit over here until the glue dries on them and we'll decide kind of how we want to display them. Um, and these are great because you can, you know, spend a little time and you can just mass make a ton of these and just have them in your stash to use for if you want to decorate stuff or room box or if you want to make little Altoid tins. Um, you can. I did a, an Altoid tin for a friend of mine where I made it into a apothecary cabinet and had stuff like this in there, <clears throat> along with the little bottles in it. It comes out really cute. So these are our regular scrolls. We'll sit those over there. And these are going to be our fancy scrolls. So for those, I'm going to use the regular toothpicks. And the regular toothpicks, we're going to do one on each side of it, and we'll, we'll roll it up to where we want to get it. Um, and then we're also going to attach the um, little beads, spacer beads and stuff to this. So the first thing I usually do is I figure out which beads I want to use for the ones that I'm doing. So I think I'll go with the copper ones. Let's see what we got here. You don't want to go too large, like if you're just doing a scroll, if you want to do caps at the end, and you can still do that with these. I can take a bead cap and I can just pop it right on the end of that and, and make it fancy too. You know, you just want to make sure it's, see how that's like way too big for that? Um, you'd want to make sure it kind of matched it a little bit better, but yeah, I could do something like this and have it on there and make it fancy too. But um, with these, I use usually something like this. Okay, so this is a, just a little spacer bead. It's, it's copper. You can get them in, in packs of 50 for like $3 at Hobby Lobby. Um, I get all my jewelry supplies unless I need something, you know, at the last minute um, from Fire Mountain Gems because, you know, to do jewelry, because I used to sell it on Etsy. That was what my Etsy shop was. And um, to be cost effective, you cannot be buying your, your jewelry supplies to do beading and stuff like that at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Joann's because it's very, very expensive that way. So um, Fire Mountain Gems has beautiful stuff and, and their prices are a lot better, especially if you want to do it and sell it and make any kind of profit. So, okay, so I think for one of them, we're going to use these. So I'm going to need four. One, two, three, and four, and that fits the scale of that piece a little bit better too. Now for this one, we can have a little bit larger ones um, because keep in mind, you're gonna have to roll these up together. So you don't want them too big, otherwise you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to get enough paper wrapped around these. So, I wonder if this one, no. Yeah, that's not too bad. Scale of that might be a little large though. I do have the square ones. Yeah, I think I might use the square ones too. So one, two, three, four. All right. And you don't have to just use the metal ones. You can also use glass ones. So I do have here um, some check press glass beads. And the key is you just want it to be able to fit on the end of your toothpick so that it holds it fairly steady um, when you do that. But see, you could use something like this. Be very shiny and, 
and pretty, you know, and that's how it would look on there. We can do that and one of the spacer beads, you know, it's, it's whatever the heck you want to do with it. Although this one's a little large, I think. Maybe something like this would be, make a little bit more sense with it. But anyways, lots of options. Okay, so I think we will use the round ones on this because they're a little bit bigger and we'll use the square ones on this. And of course, again, you want to decide which way do you want it. Do you want it long ways or do you want it this way? I don't think I would do it this way just because I'm going to get very, very little um, around both sides. So I'm going to go like this with it. And I want to go like that with this one because I want to be able to have it open and see um, some of the really cool drawings and things. Look at that. All right. So we're gonna do the same sort of thing. You know, I really should ink these before I curl them. It's much easier. At least I remembered on the last ones to do that. And this, again, it just gives it that more aged appearance. And you're gonna be seeing a lot more of this picture. So you really want it to look, um, you know, a little more ancient scrollish or whatever. Okay. There's that. So again, we're gonna do, get it so that it's gonna curl in this direction. Same with this. And the wider it is, you know, just be really careful with it. Don't, don't do it too hard or you'll tear this page, but it just needs to kind of start curling for you. All right, and so each of these is gonna take two toothpicks. And of course, make sure that the toothpick is long enough for it which it just barely is on this. And it doesn't need to go too far into this because we're gonna super glue it. So it'll, it'll be good. All right, so I'm gonna take the toothpick. And on this one, it's a little bit different. This one you do obviously want it stuck to the toothpick. So I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna put it on the very edge of this. And I'm going to stick this down like so and make sure I've got my um, toothpick evenly spaced. So I have at least a little bit sticking out that I'm going to be able to attach my um, beads to. And with this, that same kind of rounding motion so that it's going to be nice and, and flush up against your toothpick. I'll do the same with this one. See? Reflexes. All right. Put this here. And then get this nice and flush. And we're going to kind of do a combination um, of stuff because we want to... I like to have them rolled up to where the two, um, you know, things kind of touch or almost touch. So in order to do that, you need to, to do the bead cap stuff at the end too. So that's what we're going to do with these. So I set you to dry, do the same with this one. Like I said, these are super fun. They're super easy. You don't have to have the kit, obviously, to make them. Um, if you have any ephemera kit, you can do it. If you do, like I do junk journals as well, obviously. So I'm going to have different types of kits and, and some of the ones I have have ephemera in them that, that would be good for this, but they're, you know, regular size. Well, just print it four to a page or something. So that way you're shrinking it down um, to whatever size. And if you had, say, a postcard that's printed at normal size, well, you just figure out what one twelfth of, you know, um, 100% is and, and you reduce it to that percent because it's 1 12th scale. Okay, we're going to center this. Yes, this is very long. We are going to um, cut them down with scissors. So.
this one here nice and secure and I'm going to leave these to dry as well and then I will be right back. Okay, so these should be attached pretty good now that we're not going to, you know, tear it off as we're rolling it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at one end and we're just going to start rolling it in towards the center. Same way we did the other one. Let's bring it here so you can kind of see it. And again, you really want to make sure these are nice and straight um, because the double scrolls don't look as good when they go wonky, right? And so same kind of deal we're going to take and do. I usually just do a little line of glue and it's a very thin line. That's why I use the quilling bottle because um, otherwise all you'll do is you'll push glue in a little wave, you know, ahead of it. But I do that every so often to kind of tack it down where I want it. And yeah, incidentally, <laughs> and you'd think I would know this because I work with math for a living. You know, it's, it's a huge part of my job. But um, yeah, if you want to take something that, let's say this is regular size, this picture of it, and shrink it down to 1 12th scale, <laughs> it's 12%. It's Jesus. Yeah. Duh. Okay. So, um, and a lot of things like Adobe and, and whatnot will let you customize it. Okay, and we're going to start doing the other side, and we're going to keep going kind of back and forth um, until we get them kind of close to each other and or where we want them. Um, and then we were going to put the ends on them real quick so that uh, so we'll know how close we can get them before we say glued down and committed, you know. Really, we're going there, glue. And since the toothpicks are tapered, um, I generally kind of hold it in the center when I'm rolling it, just because you'll go start <laughs> listing a bit sideways um, if you don't. Okay, so we've got plenty of our picture going on there. So we'll do a couple more rolls in this direction. And we'll tack it down. And the same with the other side, as soon as this side grabs. But yeah, this would be fun to do, like, especially if you have, say you do a lot of genealogy type stuff and you have some maybe uh, family documents that are, that are really cool that you want to work into something. But yeah, shrink them down and, and do them like this. Super duper easy. The trick is just getting it to print where it's not fuzzy. Um, but there are tricks to that, and maybe someday I'll do a, a Photoshop tutorial. It's like, here's how you make all this stuff. So I'm not worried about it cutting into my Etsy too much because it's such a pain in the butt <laughs> that you're not going to want to trust me on that. Um, you know, maybe occasionally for stuff here and there, but yeah, it's, it's a bit much, you know. Okay, so I think I like this about like this. So we are going to take our little ends and we're going to put these on. Now we don't have to trim these because there's not very much sticking out. And so what I did was I went and got the Loctite super glue. And this stuff's great because it's um, gel. And you just press on the sides. And I'm probably going to have to cut this. I can't remember. I'll try it first before I do that just so I don't, you know, make the hole way too big. Okay. Third time's charm. Read the directions on the back. <laughs> Apparently you have to turn it until you hear a clicking sound. I don't know. Whatever. There we go. Okay. See how precise that is? Now you try to do that with regular liquid super glue and you are going to be in a world of pain. All right. So I'm just going to put that on there. That's it for a second. Super glue is not instant. It's, it's fairly instant, but the more glue you have, the, the more you kind of have to wait for it to grab, which is what we're doing there. So I'll do the same thing on here. And this one, I'm going to get the um, toothpick end and kind of the paper too, just because it uh, there's not a heck of a lot of toothpick sticking up out of there. And we're going to be smart about this this time and not stick our fingers next to super glue and put that on with the tweezers. 
Okay. So those ends, give that a second. And we will put the ones on the other end. I think we'll let those set up over here. We'll go ahead and work on this one. So same thing. Start rolling these inwards. You know, and you can have these um, open or rolled as tight as you want too, um, because they do look cool kind of sitting out on a desk like this as well. So we might do that with this one, I think. So we'll just do minimal rolling on our, our ends here. Okay, I'm gonna put the glue on there and I'm just gonna hold this and then I will come back in a second when it's when it's set up enough to where we can cut the ends off and add the beads to this one too. So back in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so we've given that a second. Let's go back to this one real quick and we will go ahead and put the other two ends on. And then we will decorate the ends up as well. On this one again, this is the shorter side of this one, so I'm going to put a little bit on the paper also, just so it's got extra to stick onto. And I'm going to drop that. Yay! Come on, do not start with me. <laughs> and I've stuck it to my finger. Nice. Yeah, that's why I love using my, my tweezers for stuff. They don't seem to get stuck as much as I do, right? All right, so leave this over here. The, the weird thing you'll see happen too is like right here, this is where the um, super glue was drying and it does this weird fogging thing. That's why you don't want to use super glue with glass or acetate or plastic because it's gonna fog it. All right, so now with these, obviously this would look ridiculous, right? So we're going to trim these down. Um, I think I'm going to trim them pretty close to the actual edge of it. Um, you know what, I'm going to get these. Hmm. So these are jewelry making um, snippers and they are designed to use on large gauge wire. So if you try to use wire snippers on like, you know, a 12 gauge wire or 10, um, you'll probably, you know, put a, a nick in your clippers before you'll cut through the wire, but they're great doing anything round um, you just have to line up see where they kind of meet like that and they just snip it right off it's great and leave a little tiny bit of the wood showing because I mean it probably would haha <laughs> would um, you know when you have it on a, a real scroll and now I'm just gonna have to I know there's gonna be four pointy bits of toothpick that I'm going to have to then find because I promise I will step on it if I don't find any of them. All right, so I've got two here. Safely transport these to the garbage. And find the two that are at stepping on level. Okay, got them. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the super glue and we're going to put just the tiniest bit on each of these ends. Nice little drop. Yeah, the gel super glue is great because, I mean, look at that. See, it's not dripping, it's not doing anything weird, um, and it grabs onto stuff pretty good. And we'll just center that on here. Have it straight as I knock the other one over. Ugh. Yeah, and when they're falling like that, best to just let them go. <laughs> uh, this one's probably going to be stuck to my hand, I'm guessing. But these ones are just kind of balancing because it's the, the diameter of the toothpick is too wide for it. Oh good, it didn't go glue side down. It usually does. Okay, so I will spend an absurd amount of time getting these on straight. And I will come back to you once I've done that. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we're having a substitution because the problem with these are it's got this tiny, and I'm sure you can't see this, but in the center, it's got this tiny thing and it's sort of raised. So you're having to balance it on that weird thing. These, it, it went into the holes, so we're good. This one, not so much. So I'm gonna use these. These have a much larger hole in the center and they still look good on there, but it will make it about a million times easier and I'm gonna cover up the end of it anyway. So let's go with these ones because yeah, those ones were just not, not doing it. All right, so we'll let these kind of set up and see, it looks good on there. So, um, you know, if, if the first thing you try doesn't work, then try something else. Um, there's always something else you can use. So I'm gonna let these set up and then once they do, I'll put these ends on, I'll put these guys away, and I will come back to you and we will decorate up the ends of them. Okay, so as should come as zero surprise to anyone, did I finish this video in 45 minutes? I didn't. So again, I'm cutting it in half, but we do do a lot of stuff, to be fair. So um, I will see you again in part two for the rest of it. Of course, I'm gonna upload it um, on the same day. So that way, you know, you don't really have to wait, but you also don't have to do a, an hour 30 in one sitting. So there you go. So see you guys in a bit. Hey, me Tiff. Bye.